here tonight and the tradition yeah that's right we're just gonna have a it's gonna be euphoria here tonight we're all just gonna have a blast and uh, we, uh so saturday was the uh first installment of our easy paradise summer concert series at young ethel's for those of you who came out thank you for coming out we have free paintings the great free paintings played and uh jason t cucker was there bryce leong it was amazing so we're going to be doing uh events throughout the city uh, this summer, Easy Paradise is going to be booking people from the open mic, poets, comedians, musicians, to play various plates. We're going to go to the beach, we're going to go uptown, we're going to go downtown, we're going to go battery, we're going to do governors, we're going to do it all. Easy Paradise Tour, summer 23, baby, New York City. We're going to Staten Island. We're going, we're going, believe it, we're going to the Bronx, baby. And yes, we're going to Queens. We're dominating. We may even go to New Jersey. Who knows? Who knows? Pro probably not, but maybe. Maybe. I know. We love New Jersey. We're definitely going to Jersey City. We're going to Hoboken. We're going to uh, Asbury Park. Uh, so check out the uh, Philadelphia. We're coming for you. Easy Paradise is everywhere. It's not just in this room. It's not just Monday night. It's 24-7, 365. So uh, I have the... Uh, we've been writing a group poem. Everybody, this is summer school. I hope you came to work. Okay? I hope you came to think... Uh, we've been writing a group poem every week. Uh, people from the open mic in this notebook. It, 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 you may have seen that online, so I'll be passing this around uh, during the open mic for us to collaborate and write a big poem together here on July 3rd, okay? Uh, and uh, I'm going to start things off. Uh, I'm just going to read a poem for everybody about my recent uh, life. Thank you. This is called Great Days. 7-1 From the shores of Manhattan to the gardens of Brooklyn Doubleheader gigs, Ethel's and high hello Backyard under goddess night Men to order carnitas Keep mistakenly getting asada instead I awoke to the beauty and presence of all things Flowers partying at night Staying up well past the dawn these green stalks are walking upright just like her. You're different on the weekend. I'm glad System Lord is back. Jump starting the OS. Thank you. Yeah, System Lord has been resuscitated, everybody. Get, you're not even going to be able to stop System Lord. We're coming for, for the entire uh, culture, as it were. Parks at Avenue, Comet Bus attended the Julian Poirier greetings reading. No mames way, no mames. Y no te doy uno mas por qué. The grocery store on the corner was a farm until as recently as the 1930s. All aboard the Paris Hilton, Dolce Far Niente, landlord wants to sell the building. Eddie says Blood Glove is his masterpiece takes off from Creeley. Is it about OJ? 
crystallization of the perception in diamond cut alphabet. The sun is out and it's raining. She's got the cat, all she needs is the acid. Just so you know, Pepsi vending machine never not hung over. My comedy career is a joke. Is the joke on me? Or you? On Dodge Hall Terrace, smoking weed, overlooking Broadway, shaking off signals, available on video, TV's bloopers, and practical jokes. Either way, we premiered the film before we watched it. We hope next to release the DVD before coming up with the concept. The sweetness of doing nothing. Hung over on sourdough, Eddie's showing Ashley how to play the musical Saw. He has Alice Notley's one known painting on the wall. Yeah. I'm so excited for everyone to perform tonight. I can't wait to see the poetry, the comedy, the music. We're gonna have a great time. It's gonna be euphoric. We're gonna, I mean, it's gonna be fireworks here, okay? Who needs the outside? Who needs the Hudson River? Who needs all that? This is where it's going down tonight. Thank you all for coming out. Let's get things started with uh, Anjali, An Anjali, Anjali. Let's get Anjali up to play some guitar for us. Give it up, big easy parents, warm welcome for Anjali, everybody. It's, it's Anjali, that was super close. <laughs> Thanks so much. This is my first time at this open mic. Um, but it seems like a sick vibe. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play a couple songs that I wrote, one right before a breakup and one right after. <laughs> See if you can figure out which one's which. A little guessing game. Uh, the first one's called Romanticize You. Expectations. 
<laughs> Give it up for Anjali Simone, everybody. Do you have a Spotify or anything? Bandcamp? Follow Anjali on Instagram, everybody. That's fantastic. That really sounded beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm tagging all the performers in Instagram social media page. So you can find them through the Easy Paris Mag profile. Once again, it's five minute time limit per performer, two drink minimum. We've got a lot of exciting acts. Can I get, let's get free paintings up. Can we get free paintings up to play for us? Great musician. Give it up for free paintings, everybody. I made a Spotify playlist with a lot of the Easy Paradise uh, musical acts, and it is really phenomenal, if I may say so myself. I was surprised. It was really good. Free Paintings is on it. He's got a lot of great recordings. Give it up for Free Painting. What's up, everybody? Free Paintings, American band for 4th of July. Today we're going to start with a cover. So the French brought us the music of the future in the 1990s, but not that many people paid attention. So in honor of 4th of July, we're going to play a, a French song. It's in English, though. Woo! This is one by Free Paintings. Woo! The butterflies in my stomach gather actual living insects. I see you every morning. I want to make you breakfast so we get up And we move The home is a structure with a surrealistic feeling I'm not sure if I like this But I love the feeling so we get up All these polys 
administrations are just castles made of people designed and intended to protect the feeble, but we don't need them. We are friends. I hope I never ever have to talk to a cop again, but if it ever happens, yell, please let go of him, come on. Let's be friends Cause this is a song for you For making me feel the way you do Say that you want it and I want it too Thoughts on life with nothing better to do All these corporations are just castles made of people Designed and intended to enslave the feeble But we don't need them We are friends I hope I never ever have to work for the devil But if it ever happens No, she's the reason why I'm here have no fear Cause this is a song for you For making me feel the way you do Say that you want it and I want it too Thoughts on life with nothing better to do Cause this is a song for you for making me feel the way you do Say that you want it and I want it too Thoughts on life with nothing better to do To do, to do, yeah Alright guys, you can listen to that on Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music, YouTube It's called Castles Made of People It's by my band Free Paintings Woo! All right, everybody. God bless America. Love you, not talk. Love you, Thank you, all the poets, the comics. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, all the other musicians that are come on stage tonight. You're in for a good show. It's gonna be the best two Monday night of your life. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 The money is in your ears. Give it, give it up once again for free paintings. An American band. Fantastic. All right, we're going to initiate the poem writing sequence. I'm initiating it right now. Once again, we write a poem as a group every week together. This is part of the summer school curriculum that we're doing. So you can contribute a line if you want. You can contribute a page if you want. You can draw on it, whatever you want to do. I'm going to send it this way, it'll make its way around to you. We read it at the end of the night, so stick around all night if you want to hear the uh, amazing masterpiece we're going to write. <laughs> you want to feel free to add a line. All right, uh, I'm so excited. That was great, free paintings. All right, can we get the great, the great Lee Moore up? I think it's time. Lee Moore, give it up for Lee Moore, a great poet. She's been seeing a lot of exciting concerts recently. Oh, yeah. I have a poem and a song for you all today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the poem is called Understanding Chicago. It's new. And I'll dedicate it to my friend Mo David. Yeah. In honor of his hometown. Chinatown. Understanding Chicago. <clears throat> I'm drunk and driving. I thought you should know. I promise I'm not like you. But I did find myself wondering, what the fuck am I doing in Illinois? <laughs> and furthermore, this close to Wisconsin. But how I want North Kedzie, Irving Park, in my bones on this cold October morning, so cold, so soon, how I wish to understand Chicago. 
so I could feel you under my skin more than ever. I want to think I understand it now in June, July. The monkey, the little dog running the corn cobs, I'm the parasol, I'm the river, and I'm trying to incarnate the lake. I'm elegant, and you love me. I'm a mess. I'll have two more cocktails. <laughs> The fire's burning in the back, and I know just where it started. Your fucking face is like a bomb, impossible to avoid, and my soul started to pour out of my gritting teeth so many years ago now, because I want a pie slice apartment, I want Rose and Mary, I want you in blue light. I'm a cherry ghost, you could find me in the stairwell, haunting the space. Yeah. Okay. Is Ashley Escobar here? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Well, she reminded me of a song that I love very much and that I wanted to sing here for a while. Um, so she, I guess she'll just miss it. Um, but this is a song from long before any of us were born, a beloved song, uh, a beloved standard popularized by the great Chet Baker. <clears throat> I make a date for golf, and you can bet your life it rains. I try to give a party, and the guy upstairs complains. I guess I'll go through life just catching colds and missing trains. Everything happens to me. I never miss a thing. I've had the measles and the mumps. And when I play an ace, my partner always trumps. I guess I'm just a fool who never looks before she jumps. Everything happens to me. At first, I thought that you could break this jinx for me. That love would turn a trick to end despair. Now I just can't fool this heart that thinks for me. I've mortgaged all my castles in the air. I've telegraphed, I've phoned. I sent an airmail special to your answer was goodbye. There was even postage due. I fell in love just once. And it had to be with you. Everything happens. Oh, everything happens. Everything happens. To Everything happens to Lee Moore, everybody. Give it up for Lee Moore. Great New York original, beautiful acapella. The Chet Baker. Is that a Gershwin? Uh, I don't think that was. It, it's got to be Rodgers and Hawes or some kind of classic. We'll find out. The Great American Songbook, everybody, here on the 3rd of July. We got great songs, even though this country is a crime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to keep it rolling. Is Abby Rose in the house? Abby Rose, are you out there? Right here. Right. Oh yeah, can we get, let's get Abby Rose up. Give a big round of applause for Abby Rose, everybody. Um, 
but I am going to read a few poems. Woo! Woo! I can find them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyone needs to take a deep breath? Is there permission to do so? Thank you. So. This poem is called Holding, and I wrote it around the winter solstice, and now it's summer. I wrote it about having a hard time letting go in a relationship, and things feel a little later now, so I thought I'd share. Yeah. <laughs> Holding the ephemera wrapped up in a body. The love you sought, the love you fought for, the love you thought was forever, in this way, its softness wrapping, crafting, unraveling, traveling somewhere deeper. 444 sees a pomegranate juice dripping in the underworld, holding out for the rose unfurling, the hibiscus sipping, the candle wax dripping, holding out for the heavens ringing, the hummingbirds singing, the memories of kissing, and clouds, and floral winds, and salted tides, and inner thighs, and the sun rising and falling in streams of golden light. Holding on to the little living room, the pastel dreams, a tiny bowl in the kitchen to hold our rings. Holding on to the ocean, trying to direct the flow. Holding on to the desert, trying not to let the sands blow. Holding on to my body, I asked to let go. This one is called Angel of Death. <laughs> Let's just get into it. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio rising. <laughs> Angel of Death, bloom into me. Kiss me through the veil and spin me through dreams. I felt you fly over me in my dream last night. I wanted to be lifted, I've always wanted to be light. I felt you like a snake slithering beside me, blurring the lines between dream and wake. My thigh found its way above the sheets, half in, half out, as I tend to be. How I long to give myself fully, to devote all of me to something holy. How I wanted to be swallowed by you, dissolve into oneness, become something new. How I wanted you to give me wings, to scour the underworld and soar the ethers and sail the salted air of dreams to see it all lucidly, to be the rain shaking from trees, the fertile soil underneath, the wind carrying seeds, the deep cosmos and seas. Am I supposed to see this human body as a blessing? I want to see all the layers of me undressing, unraveling, to bow into dust to wind and prayer. I want to know why you watched me dream, why you traversed into my psyche, the gnawing flames growing hungry, parasitic, sucking out the nourishment from me as the ridges deepen and the energy drains, my life force empties as the spirit comes through, and I am less me, the more you. Did you want me to keep living? Did you want that for you? Give it up for Abby Rose, everybody. I too am a Scorpio rising. And it's a full moon. Or it was yesterday, 7.34 this morning was a full moon. So we got that full moon energy, poets. Yeah. It's time to howl. Yeah. You want to pull that out of you. This is the night. This is the night to cast the spells and to manifest and to set your intentions. Set your intentions, everybody, with this microphone and this mental power that we're gathering here. If we meditate on it, we can achieve world peace. I believe it. Okay. <laughs> Do we have uh, Ave Bray? Is that right? It's Ava Bray. I'm so sorry. As you, I'm a substitute teacher, okay? This is what we get paid for. The educational system in this country sucks. Blame. What is it? I'm sorry. One more time. Ava and, and Maggie. Ava and Maggie, everybody. Give it up. Give it up for the great Ava and Maggie. It's just my Instagram handle. It's not his fault. And um, 
Once again, it's a two drink minimum. See the great Ben Shields at the bar. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is our first time playing this open mic. Yeah. My name is Ava. And I'm Maggie. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to get set up first. Woo!
supporting clap I've ever heard. It was like really effective though. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna sing two more. I wrote these songs. If we have time, I'll sing one and then evaluate. Short story? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll make it short. Yeah. <laughs> I'll transform it quickly. <laughs> okay. Okay.
for the media takeover begins. That sounded great. Give it up one more time for Eva and Maggie. Beautiful, beautiful harmony on the retro microphone. We love it. It's uh, Fox Rennie. Are you out there? We are ready for you. Fox Rennie. Give it up, give it up, give it up for Fox Rennie, everybody. two poems. Um, yeah. So the first, the first per poem that I'll read is from a series that I've been working on that's on, it's Trans Joan of Arc and a Trans Archangel St. Michael. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of going back and forth between both of them speaking to each other. Um, So this is at the very beginning, and so they're, they're kind of just moving. Um, and this is from the angel's perspective. On earth, under the skin of everything, there were seasons, motions. Jen often sent his body into hiding, left his voice in the rain to rust. I told him one day crowds will gather for his touch, his blessing. Jen said, can I touch you? I wondered what there was to touch. I cast my voice like a shadow, physical, yes, but I felt him wave his hand through nothing. Does my body belong to me or I to my body? He asked. There is no contract, I said. What becomes of me? He asked. I answered what I could in the time we had. I unraveled the growth of his chest, the splay of his hips, tugged on his vocal cords like the rope of church bells. I heard his pleasure like a prayer stretching backwards. Vessel of my vessel, be good. I left a streak of luminescence on his forehead like the lick of the lioness. I didn't tell him what became of him was becoming. That's the first one. Woo! Um, this is like, a, I, I usually read poems that I've like edited, but this is a poem that I wrote like a, a week ago, and I like just edited it today. So I thought it'd be. I'm trying to do things that are fun. Woo! So, Woo! Uh, I thought it'd be fun to read this one. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> A coyote and a fox kiss to crossbreed. Blood salivates, fur lubricates where we're cold. There's an old story about me touching his chest him touching mine, and the lesson is sensation. There are new symmetries to house each other in. Dogmatic, automated ease, dog-eared by accident. Some piecemeal disobedience. I run the world around for an inch of his scent. I find it under the bridge of his arms, building a paper den. He licks one wall and presses it against another. I work the sun like a stove, salt, Incision scar in the public park. Can you believe once all that open? Years ago, he had a dream where he killed me. 
He laughed, he said that was the first sign. We get it, men love each other through violence, or maybe through cycles of protection. There are tides that come only once. There are horses stampeding underneath. And further under that is miles of stone, color changed by insects spurring through time, dark lines where they didn't reach. Years ago, he told me he was trying to feel lineage, the freight elevator of evolution. I lay down and try to accept how pufferfish create perfect circles inside perfect circles to attract a mate. We lay down and the open of our chest sprawls and the lines across the divot. I make myself into a boy overnight. I do it with my hands. I almost give in, but I say no, I like it, like something I shouldn't like. I touch his arms, his shoulders above me like a heavy earth. I break into a pack of wild dogs. I kiss what of me leaves and returns like something bright in our mouths. What are we now in the history of things? What's the difference between wanting a boy and wanting to be a boy? There's only what can and what can't be helped. I follow his scent. I roam and circle and sleep inside it like a fossil. Give it up for Fox Ready, everybody. Is that published anywhere? Or? We got to publish that. Somebody publish this immediately. Fox Ready, give it up, give it up one more time. Fantastic. All right, can we get the great, great Alabaster Rum up to the stage, everybody? One of the great performers of New York. I want to be a bird too. Thank you, Alabaster Rum. Give it up for Alabaster Rum, everybody. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Matt. Um, okay, so uh, this song is what's well, called Rocket. I thought oh, yeah. it's quick. Woo! Uh, uh, so here we go. Um, let me just test this sound.
Give it up, give it up for Alabaster Ray! I don't know how does he's a time traveler. He's from the Renaissance. Is that modern? I mean, I'm sorry, I left the reverb on. It's a psychedelic experience. Give it up one more time for Alabaster Rum, everybody. Amazing! The troubadours are alive here at Easy Paradise. All right. Do we have, is Igor out there? Igor! Igor, are you out there? Are you down in the well? Can you hear me? <laughs> just, just make any noise. Scream, anything. Okay. How about uh, Leonora of Love? All right, give it up for Leonora of Love. My name's Leonora, and for some time now, I've been thinking a lot about what some people call the anthropological average, the normal body, the body of the sovereign subject. More importantly, I've been thinking about what lies in excess of that body. These are some poems from a collection called Blob. The, uh, the first one is called Proto Blob. It goes, Tautness claims all the rage. Skin pull in return the test of corpulence or anthropo average, as in, oh, you're too much. Elasticity and rate of snap factor for the fallenness or fullness of man. Thank you. The next one is Woo! called yeah! The next one is called Hark the Hulking Bulk. It goes Hark the Hulking Bulk as it schleps away to wealth belly, sloshing and squelching as it goes in never not straining past parameters. Lipids weep grease in the spirit of straining past. Uh this Woo! one I'm in the middle of memorizing that. Yeah! Past, stuck out in ungent smear, topical ointment, gift of God-filled flubber. Uh, unctuous inclusion offers a lasting rub. A history of eating is not a closed affair. Harbors the succulent, cereal presence of belly wealth in the massively involving folds. Adipose as excess the state of being fat or insensate border breach, or failed self-control. Thank you. The next one is... <laughs> this next one is called Grape Gut, Juicy Oozy. It goes... <laughs> Tongue is a pithy salted grape, which makes me suck the slick pink, pinky tip for saliva, and the overspoken threat of violence, which lingers in the spare thrashing air. Talk nice but tasteless kiss in the assumption and disclosure of arrest, chemical or else done different, but either some fucking way it resorts in ever hurling return to the unlovely idea that this bear is going to crush my skull open, I'm so sure of it. Or when waves talk that, the revolting molting of months old lubricant, dried thick encrusted globs as memory of paralysis, or reaching out and finding for fucked romance bald. Thank you. The next one is <laughs> Anus. It goes <laughs> pink, sweet, puckered up, dumb, dull, doubled up, a year of guts, splurge, chub splay, the pubic anti public. Holy yet stuffed and, and, uh, yeah. Holy yet stuffed and gorge the interplay of full and fall. All fat the sovereign surpassed at outermost skin pull. In vaginated desire sucks glob roll in interior squelch. Gush as a principal orientation of cum and what counts for it. Courage now, fortunate jigglers. Flab flush pleasure blurs, all round chunk surfers. Admit yourselves excessive property as perma glutton subjects. Thank you. The next one. Woo! The next one is called Perhaps Space Conscious. It goes At the event, your leg may have rubbed the perfect chub of another thigh. And for this, you deserve a lifetime of correction, apparently. Thank you. The next one, then. Wealth belly in the thick of it. It goes, Ceresis is cereal, cutman. Form form in gluts opposite. Regulator regurgitating what calories it can't but not allow space. Sponge skin insists, and I'm clothed to combat it. Skin flakes, and I'm eaten as I feast beastly because fuck I am, I think. 
Funkful faced build is starting to feel as though fat is ugly bearing. Though fruitful, this young fruit is looting the diner in search of food and irresponsibility. <laughs> Lap band, the destruction of weight wealth, the communism of more than plenty, plenum even. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Give it up for Leonora of Love, everybody. That was like MFA poetry. Do you have an MFA? That was fantastic. That was great. I'm going to start a magazine and publish that right now. Because that was so great. Give it up one more time for Leah Moore. I love it. I love how you finish a poem and just immediately say thank you go to the next poem. That's exactly how it should be done. Give it up one more time. That was so great. Come back anytime. We love it. All right. We're going to keep it rolling. Do we have Amelia Blair Smith? in the house. Give it up for Amelia Blair Smith, everybody. Two drink minimum, two drink minimum. Hello, everyone. Um, woo, it's good to be here. Yeah. Um, does anybody here know about the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards? <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Okay, so this is a poem um, I wrote back in high school and I submitted to the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. <laughs> Uh, it has an awful title. Um, I hope it gets better from there, so we'll see how that goes. It's called Five Verses on Non-Terrestrial Abstraction. <laughs> Launch me up to heaven. Smack me amongst the stars. On abuse and astronomers, we haven't come so far. See, I was christened in the dust drip of the twisting Milky Way, born of men on Gaia's lip and disinclined to stay. Launch me up to heaven, please. I've tried to climb a tree. I can't set the bark aflame again. I need propellants, kerosene. I know I am a heretic, stoked in ashes of the saints. I burned my books on prophecy and bought acrylic paints. Cause every night the sun doth rise in a land I cannot see. And so until I fade away, I'll learn cartography. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have another one. It's a little bit more thematic, a little bit more America. Um, <laughs> if you like it, it's called Car Culture. Woo. Walking past the villas on Elmar Drive, the pl private planes drone overhead. Nothing here seems real, not even the salt that comes in on the breeze. Toes pressed up against the window pane, and I can see us crashing and careening into the nearest palm tree. And I can't speak for more than a second, or the air catches in my throat embarrassingly. <laughs> Driving east, as east as we can go, until we hit the fucking ocean, until the waves consume and take us both down to the rotting shipwrecks. I saw a herd of white Mercedes all start their engines at once and cross the intersection in formation. And I thought of commandeering one and driving it across the Gulf of Mexico, wheels gliding along the waves, and from the private planes it might look like a strange sea creature or a small yacht. You drive me into your gated community, tripping on shrooms, still sober enough to pick the music. We drive Michael Manley into his gated community while I'm seeing monkeys between the traffic lights. And then you drop me off at my last resort, and you resent me for hallucinating, but at this point, I'd make it stop if I could, and I'm scared to look at the street lights, because I'm scared they'll lead me up to heaven, where I'll ask God, and he'll ask me, what the fuck happened? And if God was a cop, I know what I would do first, play up my innocence, and if that doesn't work, ask to suck him off. <laughs> Would it work? Only you can tell me that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I need help. Won't you come into this poem and walk me to the end? Can you help me, please? Would you be more likely to help me if I was pretty, if I promised you a good quick fuck? If you walked me through this poem into my hotel room, a poem is a maze. Take the letter Z, for example. Z is a maze, albeit an easy one to solve. Uh, what a strange and horrifying feeling. What a betrayal. I thought you were leading me out of this poem, but you and all your amazingness 
have only led us deeper into the thicket, and I can only stand mouth, eyes, and legs wide open, amazed. Amelia Blair Smith, everybody. What, what was that poem called that was uh, on theme? Car culture. Car culture. Yes, beautiful. It's killing us. American oil industry bullshit. Fuck this country. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Give it up one more time for Amelia Blair Smith. There's so much amazingly relevant speech tonight. I'm loving what everyone is sharing. It's so beautiful. It's just really a great night. All right. Can we get Ray Guzman up? Is Ray Guzman out there? Are you out there, Ray Guzman? Maybe he stepped out for a minute. All right, we'll get Ray Guzman up in a second. All right, can we get Venus up? Venus, are you? I don't think I'm gonna perform. Okay, we'll give it up for Venus anyway. <laughs> Venus, the fantastic Venus. All right, how about how about Dago Matsuyama? Can we get Dago Matsuyama up? It's your time to shine, brother. Come on up. Let's do it! 3rd of July, Easy Paradise. We're having a great time. We got a lot of it. Give it up for Dago Matsuyama, everybody. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Good, how are you? Good. Good. My name is Daigo Matsuyama. Yeah. Yeah. I sing a song, my original song. Yeah, it's called I, I Believe in You. I didn't know if I it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll you. All right, thank you so much.
Thank you very much. I have a list of one. Can, my name is Daigo, D-A-I-G-O-1-0-0-3. So October 3rd, Daigo Matsuyama. And I have Spotify, so you can listen to my song. Thank you very much. Give it up for Daigo Matsuyama, everybody. Sounded phenomenal on the piano. Uh, follow him on social media, because that was so good. And you're going to want to follow everything. Give it up one more time for Daigo Matsuyama. Fantastic. Do we have uh, Sir Hobby Dar? Sir Hobby Dar, are you out there? All right, we'll get to you. We'll get to you. It's one of those nights. What about Dollar Piss? <laughs> Dollar Piss was signed up last week and uh, we didn't get Dollar Piss up so I wanted to do something nice for Dollar Piss and you get him up early. An a at the end. Then everyone will line up. Maybe and maybe next time. Maybe we'll get all right. Ray Guzman is back in the house. Can we get Ray Guzman up, everybody? Give it up for Ray Guzman, great poet. Gonna do some lines of verse for us, everybody. It's a two drink minimum, five minutes per performer. Sign in for next week at Easy Paradise Mag. Hello, everyone. Once again, I am a long way from the fucking Bronx, but you know, KGB. Um, I'm gonna do two, maybe three poems. I don't know. Probably just two. One of them is new, so. It's called Fill the Bottom of a Good Swimming. Circus. Okay. Oh, fuck, I'm out of breath. I walked up those stairs. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh shit, that's Miriam. It don't bother me none to fill the bottom because I'm a good swimmer. <laughs> Vexed by the weight of my apathy, my day to day consists of exchanging one mask for the next, and it's like each sun that soars over my head seems to forget to shine on me. I am exhausted. It was in a redundant and repetitive fashion. I sparked a cigarette, smoked and tossed it. You fuckers that take advantage if I let you, you pay attention to all the wrong shit and just in case this was something that y'all missed. I never once considered what it meant to cope as the strong did, I just did. How can you know when you take an amount when an inch is your only frame of reference for what loss is? Ever since I could make sense of my uncle's war stories, I've been on some raw shit and every woman that's ever really loved me knows that deep down I've already lost it and can only look at me sometimes with a pained expression wondering what could it have cost him. The waters were deep and ever so immersive ever since the day I was tossed in. I know I ought to swim, but I'd much rather fill the bottom. And that's my first poem. Woo! Thank you. I, I, I don't know what I want to do for my second poem, but I don't want to waste my time up here, so let me do whatever comes to mind. I'm so fucking ill, I'll be breaking your lines apart to show you why your fucking rhymes are garbage, I found it insulting. How you came around and thought I couldn't recognize where the facade is, do I look like a fucking stereotype? Good luck. Trying to push a nigga like me off into the margin. Statistically speaking, beating the odds didn't come with a trophy, it came with traumas, I'm not a fucking cartoon drawing. We working on a part three, even though the first two were boring and I would never let the public gas me like that. They used to make me feel like I had no redeemable qualities, so I would never fall for the false pat on the back. I would accept it. Even though it all felt like a stab, it was whack. I found myself overcompensating for qualities that my assailants actually lack. And as a matter of fact, when I get mad, all I see is red. I'm in all black. You think I'm concerned with your nonsense. It was the golden hour in New York. I was laid up with a queen photographing a figure like it was a decorative object. Your lover probably treats you like a project. And every woman that ever... Uh, and every woman that... Oh, oh shit. And every woman around me got a lot of respect for my mindset. This isn't a humble brag. These are the audacious meditations of a nobody taking a stand against the fact that it's like no standard right now. And that's my second poem. Let me. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Um, I host an open mic out of 322 Troutman in Brooklyn. Woo! My Instagram is regrets.nothing. I also sell paintings. Look me up. Woo! Give it up for Ray Guzman, everybody, and check out check out the open mic at 322 Troutman. Is it uh, it's once a month? Ray Guzman is already in the green room. All right, good enough for Ray Guzman. One more time. Great, great artist. All right, we can keep it. Can, can we get the great Christian Capadonna? I mean, I, I don't I don't know how much longer we're gonna be graced with this amazing genius artist. So we just have to get Christian Capadonna. Get ready, everybody for the beautiful 
serenade of Christian Capadonna. One little quick song for you guys today because I want to hear everyone else. I don't want to take up too much time, but I have a little song, it's like two minutes, called uh, Rosinante. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a little, a little song about, um, I mean, that my, frankly, that my scooter wrote. <laughs> wrote about me, I guess, I don't know, or someone else. Take time. But, um, oh my god, I, I almost never do this. <laughs> Yeah, so this one's called Rosinante. Woo! Whatever that means. It goes, uh, I look at them as they look at me as they're coming from the beach. They're locked in each other's arms. Uh, Woo! And they even wave as if they mean that they miss me terribly. And then they go thoughtlessly hop on now. If I could speak, then I would say Wear your helmet just in case You come upon some oil slicker But to no avail it would be Even if my wheels could speak Cause you can't reason with this gentleman now <laughs> Woo! Yeah. In vain it is for me to hope That in his silly mind he knows That we're on a one-way street and that that dumb truck up ahead uh, thinks that I'm ridiculous As well as my little beeper mm. Yet to the heart it touched me so When he said, Rosa, shall we go for a little moonlight driver? Mm. They've never been to Venice yet But they'll take the Venetian Cause it's so scenic in the night -term. Yeah! Uh. And with all the lights that light the way to lower so be where they stay For them is light enough for. And they light a tear that's in his eye That she kisses from behind On the sty only she could love her and Yet there was Claire and there was Marge There was Mary and other hearts But none would rather die like she is Oh, before was a baby love He seems to know that she's the one And that will get the way that he Needs this I'm oh, sorry With the great Christian Capadon, everybody. Give it up, give it up. One more time. That was just beautiful, beautiful. All right, we're going to keep it going. Do we have Amber Weinstock out there? Oh, did, uh, did you guys write in the poem? The poem is feeling kind of light. So I'm going to send it around again. All right, I'm sending it around to, to this side of the room. Please, please add your genius. Is Amber, Amber Weinstock. Give it up for Amber, everybody.
my band Damn the Kid. I'm just going to do a really quick song. It's my one chord song. Yeah. It's about being stuck on one chord. <laughs> and um, it's about that chord being in F sharp minor. Woo! Playlist. That's what you, you can check out on Spotify. I've got a playlist of all the great artists from these. Give it up one more time for Amber and check Damn the Kid out at Heart Bar in uh, Bushwick or East Waves Burger. I'm not even sure what the distinction is. All right, uh, give it up. Give it up one more time for Amber, everybody. All right, we're going to keep it going. Do we have Nikki Kramer in the house? Give it up for Nikki Kramer, everybody. We're super stoked up, Nikki. Right. Hello. Woo. Uh, this is my first time here, also. Yeah. Yeah. This has really been amazing. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this one is called uh, "Musings Over Walk Musings After Walking Over the Williamsburg Bridge." Slightly tripping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the base of the bridge, I sit on the ledge, dangling my legs over the side, 
I close my eyes, lengthen my spine, inhale air into my mind, and listen as the cars shoot by. The vibrational rumblings are oddly soothing. I feel like I'm floating, though the rattles and reverberations of the vehicles over pavement echo lightly through my body. Rooting me down to the ground, it's moderately thrilling sitting there on the ledge. The, cha the chaotic, cacophonic honks at motors and fits of road rage ensue, puncturing the scene. The treadmill of human life. As a sensory seeker, I feel sort of sedated by the surround sound turned up loud. While I exist within it, in it and all around. Like being inside of a boombox, a juxtaposition of rough and smooth, in tune, present but slightly detached, hovering over the highway, over my body. How does each person experience feelings of ecstasy? For me, it usually feels like a flow state, an embodied transcendence. The first time I did ketamine, it felt like a weighted blanket, a heavy lightness with a slight psychedelic component. Any pain, tension, were muted, tamed, and felt far away like I was ephemerally encased in a womb-like orb. The intersection, the split between pleasure and pain, the areas where they merge and diverge, inhabiting similar territory in the brain. Moments when the membrane of separation thins and they're occurring in tandem. When does one desire to feel pain, pleasure? How do we define good pain? What types of pleasure and pain are normalized, commodified? What thresholds do each person experience throughout a day? When do you need your roughed edges smoothed, soothed, unwrinkled? What helps? For me, it tends to be a drawn out odyssey, a processional journey to smooth out the creases, like taking a quarter and rubbing it over tinfoil. All right, so that's that one. Woo! And then this one is called, Time Shouldn't Be a Luxury. Okay. I was watching a documentary on the nature of infinity, where they ask philosophers, mathematicians, mystics, and poets about their take on the infinite versus the finite. They ask them shit like, is the universe just gargantuan but encased in the largest sphere imaginable? Or is it really just, or is it really infinite? They did this experiment, a digitally photoshopped experiment, where they put an apple in a box. The first, <laughs> they first reveal what the apple would look like five months down the line. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> right. um, anyway, where was I? Um, okay, five months down the line, and it's brown and decayed. Afterward, they show what the apple would look like five years down the line, then a hundred years, then a thousand, and so on and so forth. After a billion years or something, it's disintegrated enough that it's solely become microscopic particles that are whizzing around the box. After even more time, as told by the documentary, the particles would take all of the shapes imaginable until the only form left would be re to return to its apple state. <laughs> and I was like, shit, is that like what really happens after death? Because matter isn't created or destroyed? Would all of our particles take all of the shapes they could, then billions of years later, we would return as we are now? But anyway, <laughs> I do like to believe in reincarnation, because matter isn't created or destroyed, so where else would we go? I feel like waiting is such an odd game. When I'm waiting, for, when I'm waiting in line, or waiting for the train or something, I subconsciously, or consciously, think about death. In the buffering states, I feel like I really start to feel my humanity, and that I'm sort of, and that I'm on a body clock of sorts, as well as an external clock. 
it makes me think about what am I really waiting for? This train or, you know, to die? I feel like I have a funny relationship with death, but I don't necessarily fear it. And there are points where I'm like, huh, I kind of ra rather save myself the bullshit and be a tree or something. But it's not like I really obsess about death, though. Mostly time and the metaphors and symbols we use to express it. It's crazy that we keep time in a clock. I'm reminded of that Twilight Zone episode where that guy is fixated on his grandfather clock. He fixes it and tends to it and believes that when it dies, he will die too. But then it dies and he's still alive and he has to find a new purpose. How we perceive our own timelines as well as our sense of time and space and our own universes must vary immensely. I love thinking about a little man in a clock tower ringing a bell to signify that another hour has gone by. How many hours go by in our lifetime? I feel like I've lived like 600 years and I'm only 25. Still a lot to do though. I've never been bungee jumping. I have had a threesome, but you know, never seen a grizzly bear in person. So. <laughs> Still a lot to do. Thank you. <laughs> Like an amazing writer night here. Give it up for Nikki Kramer. What is going on out there? Because you all have jobs, you're not typically here on Monday. We've got. I mean, I mean, I think this is an. We have to be an accredited university now. We're gonna give college credit for just two drink minimum. That's right. EPU. You get your MFA from uh, from from KGB. <laughs> For the two drink, for just the low cost. Give it up one more time for Nikki Kramer, everybody. The amazing, I'm learning so much. I feel like I'm in tune with culture and society. All right, we've got Phoebe Bradbury on deck. Can I get Mo David up? Can we get the great Mo David? Get Mo David's blues, everybody. Great book. Give it up for Mo David. Oh, yeah, Mo David's blues. Hi everybody, hi KGB. Um, this is a piece I have right now. It's I dug it up and I'm happy with it, so I'm sharing it. I'm calling it Sunflower Sutra after uh, the great Allen Ginsberg. Yeah. Woo! The inimitable Allen Ginsberg <laughs> that I always try to imitate. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Lately my home has become a hospice center for sunflowers. I gather groups of exploding stars and wrap them in a crinkly plastic robe and take them home to die. And while they wilt, I weep. It only takes a couple hours before their stems go searching and so go bending in search of soil. They're disappointed, I can only imagine, to find no earth under their feet. There is only the cold glass of the vase I place them in, a prison made more insulting by its transparency. I'm sorry if I let you down, I tell the flowers, I'm sorry if my sun wasn't light enough. I'm sorry if the water was contaminated. If I poisoned you, I apologize. If I was poisoned, I apologize. But you have to understand, things have been crumbling in my hands more than usual lately. And any sane person, after a time or two too many, would begin to wonder if it was indeed their hands that are the problem. Maybe I'm the one incurring all these funeral expenses. And my dear flowers, I'm going broke paying for your coffins. The dumpster out back is tired of my visits. He's begun asking questions about what goes on in my apartment. He has a buddy at the corner store who says I'm making weekly visits. Thank you so much. Give it up for Mo David, everybody. We're so glad to have him back. The great Mo David. He did his book, Mo David's Blues, everybody. Yeah. Pay, pay him money. Buy his book. Mo David's Blues. Give it up one more time for Mo David, everybody. If people want to come in, there's, some, there's, a, there's seats over here, actually. Some really nice executive kind of leather chairs. and Really nice. This is like the VIP section, so come on in. and Once again, it's a two-drink minimum, everybody. Uh, We've got Peter Glissman on deck. Can we get the great Phoebe Bradbury to come up and read 
sing for us, everybody. Give it up for Phoebe Bradbury. Namaste. Hey, hey. I love all the poetry tonight. Yeah. Um, so I normally read poetry, and this may be a poem. It's definitely a thing. It has the potential to be something, but currently it is just a thing. Uh, as such, it is untitled. <laughs> I've been watching the rat decay all week. In fact, I've been watching it decay for the past three weeks because apparently death on a Brooklyn sidewalk is not the fast way to return to nature. I brought it up at first over a beer in the red bar. For whatever reason, we were talking corpses and this rat stood out to me because of how intact it was, just there by a garage door that never opens, lying on its right side, very much dead, but also plausibly asleep if, Bl if Brooklyn rats ever allowed themselves the luxury of being watched while sleeping. For whatever reason, walking by this absence of live rats <laughs> uh, has become a routine in brainstorming what metaphor I can make between the make between the passage of time and the passage of decomposing. At first, the rat was just there, freshly poisoned. Then, the summer humidity arrived, and as we waited for thunderstorms to hit, the rat swelled up. The third day I walked past him, he was a bloated hide, now belly up, as the sun and heat boiled the leftover gases within him. I walked on the far edge of the sidewalk, and for whatever reason, held my breath as I did it. You never know when the body will stretch past its allotted elasticity and pop itself inside out. That day, I drove to work and listened to 100 Gex and felt internally calm and very much a millennial who had lived past sincerity and could revel in irony now. The next time I headed to the corner of my street was a few days after. The Canadian wildfires had smoked the city out and given me extra reason to spend my days off inside the air-conditioned living room that had no windows and only doors. <laughs> so I can't be certain when the rat popped, but the next time I saw it, it was splayed open, a mess of fluid, rotting meat, empty eye sockets, and flies. It was very wet. I held my breath again. But it wasn't revolting, really. Horribly in pieces, with no way to tell it had, in fact, died from poisoning. Horribly in pieces, but in a way that seemed completely normal and in tune with the process of life. Upon reflection, I may hold that opinion because I knew the rat in the beginning, had witnessed its turn and swell, knew the eventual step in its scientific journey, and was not there when it finally broke its skin open. I definitely wish I had been, though. Give it up for the great Phoebe Bradbury. And what is your what is your new uh, account? Deconstructed perspectives. Deconstructed perspectives. Is it? It's an art. Poetry. Poetry account. Follow deconstructed perspectives, everybody. Give it up for Phoebe Bradbury. Great writer and doing amazing stuff. Follow deconstructed perspectives and stay tuned and go to go to her events as well. She's booking incredible stuff. All right, we've got Isabel Monk Cade on deck. We've got Jason Trachtenberg, if he's still here, on double deck. Let's get just off a hot, sold-out engagement at the Gotham Comedy Club, where he absolutely killed. Let's get it up for the hilarious Peter Glissman, everybody. Let's give it up for Matt, everybody. Yeah. 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 I want to thank Matt for bringing me up right now. I've been texting with this woman from this dating app, and I mentioned to her in texting, because our first date is tomorrow, I said, yeah, I really like the pictures of you as a redhead. And she texted me back, that's the trouble with dead boyfriends. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Guess I'm going to find out. So I had got called in to work today, and then I had a date with a different woman that was impromptu. I didn't even know we were getting together, so I decided to have an early dinner in Chinatown. So I went down, I tried to eat at Wohop, but there was a line around the block. I just wonder, when did Chinese food become more popular than Taylor Swift? <laughs> like, when did this happen? I mean, isn't this Independence Day, like American holiday weekend, supposed to be like hot dogs and popcorn and 
apple pie. It, it really annoyed me. I was thinking because when we invaded Iraq and France refused to send troops, we had to start calling French fries freedom fries. You guys remember that shit? Yeah. I don't know. Aren't we supposed to be at war with China like they're an impending threat of an enemy? Shouldn't we start calling egg rolls chinky pinkies? Am I wrong? Very, very wrong. I'll, I'll work on that one, but that's why we do open mics. No, I'm, I'm a big fan of entertainers. And great entertainers tonight, everybody. Singers, Woo! always give them a big hand. Yeah. Don't you hate it when entertainers do farewell tours that last longer than their career? <laughs> Elton John, Billy Joel, Donald Trump. I mean, when did the acronym MAGA stand for my age is god awful? I, I kind of get it. I, I'm over 60. Maybe you've seen a reality show about my sex life. Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> so I'm on a dating app called Our Time, but they forgot to add has passed. <laughs> <laughs> I date widows, because why not? I dated a woman with not one, but two late husbands. She raised her kids in a McMansion out on Long Island. First time I took her to my apartment, I said, you know, I'm sorry that um, my apartment is so small. She said, that's all right, I'm used to guys in a box. <laughs> now, bear with me, my new girlfriend just dumped me after five weeks. She's a photographer. I told her she kept overexposing the negatives. <laughs> Before that, I wanted to date a singer, but she wouldn't go out with me because she was in love with this multi-instrumentalist, and all I could do was throw my hands up and say, oh well, I hope the sax was good. <laughs> You know what's worse than dating a woman with no soul? <laughs> dating a woman with no teeth. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> I'm divorced twice, thanks. <laughs> My first ex-wife and I were like a couple of Disney characters. We started out as Prince Charming and Snow White. We ended up as Grumpy and Frozen. <laughs> So I'm from the south shore of Staten Island, sorry. <laughs> like most people from the south shore of Staten Island, my lifetime motto has always been, aim high, settle for anything. <laughs> so I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in engineering. The Pentagon hired me. They gave me a top secret security clearance. They put me in charge of counter, counterintelligence. <laughs> but they had a budget cut. So I got demoted to counterintelligence, but I couldn't handle his stress, so I took a job in intelligence. Now I work construction where everybody's smarter than me. How intelligent is that? <laughs> so I went to Catholic school for 12 years, also known as atheist prep. <laughs> you guys know about Catholics? You touch yourself, you go to hell. You touch little boys, you go to Boston. <laughs> Catholics are big on funerals. Now, I'm gonna get cremated. I like to think outside the box. <laughs> you know how much Catholics like pain? They took the Bible and they added more chapters. <laughs> so, I went to my niece's baptism. And one of the priests looked just like one of the Three Stooges. And it really scared me, because I was thinking, well, instead of looking like the Three Stooges, what if he acts like the Three Stooges? Like, how's this poor kid's life gonna go? Can you imagine going to confession with the Three Stooges? Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Will you want it? <laughs> Could you imagine getting married by the Three Stooges? In the name of the Lord, I now pronounce you men and wife. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> we just came out of the month of June. It's the month of Father's Day. I've, I lost my dad a little over a decade ago, so I always reflect on like how I could have resolved things, differences I had with my dad. But it occurs to me, do you ever think Jesus Christ had that option? Do you ever think it ever once occurred to Jesus Christ to try and resolve things with his dad by saying, Couldn't you just threaten to cut off my trust fund? <laughs> You guys have been great. I'm Pete Glisman. Thank you. Give it up for Peter Glisman, everybody. Pete Glisman. We love hearing about his New York life, living on the Upper East Side, and his dating life, and the Catholic uh, guilt that we all carry with us. I'm Catholic too, so I can relate. Give it up for Peter Glisman. I, that's very topical humor for me. All right, is Il Isabel Monk Cade in the house? She read a devastating satirical piece last week. We were looking forward to part two. Maybe next week. All right, well, that can only mean one thing. It's time for the great, great Jason Trachtenberg, everybody. One of New York treasures, a great songwriter. I was checking his stuff out on Spotify. You have an album from like 2000. It's great. Thank you. Very nice. It's all good. The melodies. Give it up for Jason Trachtenberg. Thank you. Woo! Yeah. Sorry. Hello. No. Hey. Hello. Um, so I'm working on my third musical. It's called The Statue, and I'm developing it for the Lambs Theatrical Organization in Midtown. And I'm going to do a song that's going to be in Act One, Scene Nine. Uh, the story is basically written, um, uh, adapted from Anna Dostoevsky's. Book called Reminiscences. I'm not pronouncing it right. But Anna Dostoevsky was Fyodor's much younger second wife. And so in Act One, Scene Nine, an elderly Fyodor Dostoevsky, and is that not the only kind of Fyodor Dostoevsky? <laughs> elderly one? I'm not sure if he had younger days. If he, if he, if he did, it's not captured in this musical. Uh, he's on his deathbed. And of course, just between you and me, that's the one kind of bed to be on. Uh, as, far as, as far as things go. Um, and this is the song that, that he sings as he's dying. So it's kind of a kind of a sad song, I suppose. Or maybe not. You know, it depends on, on where you're at with that kind of stuff. Oh, trigger warning. Trigger warning. Uh, the song has a, uh, an over-the-top uh, Broadway um, bridge in the middle of it. So, 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 you, 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 so you, you've been warned. You'll, you'll know when it comes. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, when the bridge comes, I'm not going to say, here comes the bridge. You know, it's, a, it's a little bit at the top.
side note about the musical, one more quick side note, our main man Vlad, who we all love, actually has a small part in the play. He's going to play Peter, uh, and we're going to play Paul, which is Dostoevsky's errant stepson, who's a real Russian jackass. Alright, Matt Frostley. Woo! Yes! Give it up for Jason Trachtenberg, everybody! I like that song, Why? The song Why, it's, a good one, right? it's great. Thank you. Check Jason Trachtenberg out on Spotify on the Easy Paradise playlist, everybody. There's a link in the bio. You can follow Easy Paradise Mag on Instagram and check out the link in the bio. We all know, we're all millennials and Gen Z. We're on Web3 here at uh, Easy Paradise. That's what Web this is. All right, we're gonna keep things going. Uh, where am I? We've got Alex Schmidt on deck. Can we get the great Malka Heinen up? Give, give it up, give it up for Malka Heinen, everybody. One of our favorites here. We've got a lot of great acts together. The show is just beginning. This is where it gets fun and we cut loose. And I'm going to do a shot right now. If anybody wants to party, it's 4th of July, baby. Woo! Give it up for Malka Heinen, everybody. as the feminine woman and you don't feel like you're actually acting like you're in your feminine and you're acting more like you're in your masculine. So this song is kind of about coming back to the feminine as a woman. Nice. Also the guitar is really quiet because I don't have a flag so bear with me. <laughs> Don't you go digging on graves of my love Don't you think you have tied me up enough I wet my seeds and put you down in the I dug my grave just to haunt my love Does it take a woman to show you who you are? I moved through evolution while you've been gone Showed you all that I can, my man. It's just a bit in the making again, my man. She's grieving. I have learned the duties of the role, the role of a woman. I've done the push and pull of some great destruction. Does 
it take a woman to show you who you are? I moved through evolution while you've been gone. I showed you all that I can. Oh, my man. It's just a bit in the making. Oh, again, I'm your man. I'm your man. Give it up for Malka Heinen, everybody. That was so, so beautiful. Really wonderful. Great stuff. Do you have a Do you have a band camp or anything? No. The, good. There's an oversaturation. You know, there's too much. Give it up one more time for Malka Heinen, everybody. That was so beautiful. Loved it. All right, we got. Natalie on deck, the great Natalie. You do not want to miss that. We've got Ed coming up, in, uh, the sinister minister, in a couple. But now, can we get uh, a big round of applause? Very funny comedian. Can we get Alex Schmidt up? Give it up for Alex Schmidt, everybody. Very funny. All right, thanks, Matt. Uh, my name is Alex Schmidt, um, like from New Girl, um, but I'm actually, I'm nothing like the character Schmidt. Um, he's, uh, he's banging Cece, and I'm banging my right hand. The, the only girl I have is my right hand, but uh, sometimes she even leaves me for other dudes. Now, like, every, everyone, everyone likes to think that they're very good at sex, like, but statistically, that can't be true. Even, even everyone in this room is like, wow, he must be talking about some other guy. Um, I, uh, one girl like, was texting me on Tinder, and uh, she said, well, why don't, you come on, why don't you come on over and fuck me good? Now, I, I may have doctored the conversation a little bit. Uh, and I said, well, I, I can ensure that first thing, but I can't promise quality. Like, oh yeah? Like, I want to see that big dick of yours. I'm gonna stop you right there. Um, I'd rather you have this like idealized sex god version of me in your head than for me to come over and disappoint. Uh, now, um, you might not um, kind of be able to tell by uh, my complexion, but I'm um, biracial. Now, I don't really experience racism, but I experience confusion. My, my Uber driver never knows whether to put on Kendrick or NPR. <laughs> like, black people are always like, God, is he one of us? White people are like, is he one of us? <laughs> but Hispanics, Hispanics are like, I, I think he might be one of us. <laughs> the, the biggest challenge I faced is determining whether or not I can say the N-word. <laughs> Now, I just want to know, like, when I'm docking down the street, if I can say all of Lil Wayne's lyrics, or just half. <laughs> all of Drake is fair game. Now, I've determined half is about right. I can give you half an N-word pass. So, Nick, <laughs> just, just don't say it with a hard G. <laughs> so, um, anybody, anybody here ever try ecstasy? <laughs> Just trying to figure out if there's any cops in the audience before I tell this joke. Um, I think ecstasy is a pretty good name. I think more drugs should be named after the feeling that's invoked when you take them. So for example, cocaine should be called confidence. Xanax, relaxed. Alcohol, also confidence. Then lust, then anger, then depressed. Fentanyl would be death. And bath salts? Cannibalism. 
<laughs> so, um, so uh, the five second rule, the five second rule does not apply to the streets of New York. Like, if you ever drop something, it's gone. You have to accept that. I've had to buy five new phones since I've been here. Like, you might have heard the conspiracy that coronavirus was started by someone eating bat soup. But let me ask you, what's more likely? Someone eating bat soup or, some, or someone uh, eating a baking egg and cheese that they dropped on the A-train? Yeah, the MTA did a good job covering that one up. Now, um, while I've been here, I've been commuting by the subway and it, it's very depressing. Um, everyone's just like looking very sad on the subway. Like, it, yeah, that's not even a joke. Like, thank you. Um, now, if you didn't, if you didn't know any better, you would have thought, you would have thought the next stop was Auschwitz. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's not, let's not go too crazy. Um, like, I, but like, I used to think that the worst thing that can happen on subway if uh, if some crazy person like walks in, uh, like, oh, uh, give me your Arizona. But but I've realized the worst thing that could happen is if somebody comes in with a speaker and microphone. The last the last thing I want to hear when I'm sitting on the train car is, ladies and gentlemen, can I get your attention, please? God, like, that, that's the only thing that makes me really wish we were going somewhere in Poland. <laughs> now, the, the, proper, the proper way to disappoint a bunch of people with a speaker and microphone is to sign up for an open mic. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, one of my problems is, like, I overthink. I'm always constantly thinking. Um, which is very easy to do. Um, and if you don't believe me, just just think about it. Like, th thank you, sir. That one was for you. And my friends, my friends have told me, like, well, you know what? Like, y you think too much. That's why you're not happy. You'd just be better, like, if you thought less. And I'm like, oh, geez. I wish I thought of that. All right, thank you, everybody. That is my time. It was great. Uh, We'll see you next week. Give it up for Alex Schmidt, everybody legitimately killing. Peter Grisman loves it. He's the arbiter of comedy. Give it up one more time for Alex Schmidt. Very funny stuff. All right, we've got the sinister minister on deck. Uh, uh, Easy Paradise is hosting a reading at New York City Poetry Festival. July, yes. If you've never been to uh, New York City Poetry Festival, you gotta go. It's on Governor's Island. It's a beautiful event. If you're into this, they do an open mic, and it's just, it's like the, the Bonnaroo of poetry. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Coachella of poetry. It's the Lollapalooza. I don't know. It's it's something. It's a great event. We're hosting a reading there July 29th, 11 a.m. This next poet is going to be reading for us. Give it up for the one, the only, the Natalie, everybody. Give it up for Natalie. And come out July 29th to see us read on Governor's Island. Give it up for Natalie. You want to play that? Can I play this? Okay, I'm going to try doing that like this. Woo! <laughs> I love you, and you are looking at me like I am so, so dirty. And you tell me that I smell like the strip club. Distinct. Hairspray and body spray and sweat and other people's sweat. You say you don't even want to fuck me on the days that I work, that you can feel the other men on me, and I already knew that. But hearing you say it out loud makes it so much worse. So I always go home to shower before coming back to yours after my shift. So it's a good thing we're neighbors. 
You are so accessible that way. If I am drunk, I won't even think about it unless you are begging me to come so you can hate it out loud and in front of me and still have the woman you love sleeping next to you. I swore to never change. When the other girl in the dressing room says a man can never really be okay with it and love you, I laugh. But here I am, washing myself off for you, and you tell me you can still smell it, you can still feel it, and so the shower was useless, but at least I am trying. I got one more. I am in line at the bank, and it is one of those days where the waiting is palpable, where the line is long and everyone is clutching an envelope, staring at the ceiling, but I am carrying eight pounds of money concealed in a pillowcase, and when it is my turn, it takes 45 minutes for the bank teller lady to run all the singles through the money counter. Her machine is nice. Two, not like the ones at the club, which are shitty and stop when hair or confetti sticks in between the bills. I would have counted faster than her by hand. At the jewelry store, they weigh the money on a scale when I pay for my gold chain in all singles. But she has to run it through the machine, whirring and clicking and stopping while she is sighing. I swear I can hear her call me a slut even though she doesn't say it out loud. I can feel everyone behind me in line at this bank in Midtown wanting to stare at me, and not just because I have all this cash, but because they know how I got it, and my boyfriend is standing against the wall next to me like a bodyguard. I wonder if the teller lady is thinking about how she may be touching money that may have been in between my butt cheeks. <laughs> A woman comes up to me and asks me to ask the teller something about exchanging dollars to pounds. I am relieved that's all it is. But later on, my boyfriend says that she just wanted to say something, anything to the girl holding up the line at the bank. Once she goes back to her place in line, she is talking to someone about her daughter and I can hear her too, even though she does not say it out loud. Not my daughter. She doesn't know that though, she has no idea, and you know what, I hope one day she has a full circle moment telling her husband, remember that girl at the bank 10 years ago? I remember thinking to myself, our little girl would never, and here we are, and I can't believe it, and I don't know where I went wrong, and I hope she does, I hope she does. Give it up for the great Natalie, everybody. The one, the only, the Natalie. Come see us July 29th at New York City Poetry Festival. When Natalie writes about money, it sounds like money. It's real fucking money. That's why I love it. That's America. Give it up for Natalie, everybody. The great, the great. We love it. All right, we've got a very special act coming up next. This next performer actually is ordained to as a minister and legally can marry you in the state of New York. City the, of New York. City of city, New York. City okay. Of greater New York. City. It's not legal apparently outside of the city. There's certain counties that don't like my uh, ordainment. No. Okay. Certain counties, your marriage might not be legitimate. So I, if you come from those counties, unfortunately, um, we can't do anything for you. Chan but chances are you're not one of those counties. We're so. starting a wedding business. We will do your entire wedding. We'll do the reception. We will do the ceremony. He will marry you. We'll play the music. We'll do the dance. We'll do the father-daughter dance. We'll do the cake cutting. If you want an easy paradise wedding, let's give it up for this next performer. He is an ordained minister in the city of New York. Give it up for the sinister minister, Ed Pankoff, everybody. So, I mean, listen, uh, I, I know I have a tendency to ramble, so I'm going to try to keep it as 
structured as possible. <laughs> but the question is, uh, you know, I'm going to want to make sure all of you, and by that I mean all of you who are willing to listen, the allowance to meditate a little bit. Matt, can you please cue the music, please? <laughs> yes. Into the nose. Guys, let's do it together. odds when I look at blackjack, which is actually the most fairest of all poker games in terms of the mathematics purely alone. Which is why those MIT motherfuckers broke the bank on those shits, and that's why the blacklist of Vegas casino gamblers grew really fast in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you find it funny, and so do I. <laughs> Quite funny indeed. Because luck is something you never bet on. No. Those of us who want to find fortune have to create it. We have to define ourselves not necessarily on our various achievements. Oh, this day I did this, that day I did that. No, 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 no. Because those become nothing more than memories at the end of the day. Consistency is the key to building the kingdom. And we must all build the kingdom within ourselves and then we don't have to rely on luck. And then we can start buying up casinos and get it fucking rich. <laughs> Monopoly, bitch. <laughs> yeah, everyone hates me. <laughs> I love you. And I still believe in love. <laughs> well, let's call it faith then. 
<laughs> because there's something he said actually. Carry him. For real. Faith in one's faith is magic. And that is the second subject that I'm wishing to bring today. <laughs> How does magic actually work? Now, I'm a non denominational mister. You ever come to me asking for spiritual advice? I'm going to ask you, what do you believe in? Cocaine. Cocaine. But, uh, for real, for real. Um, they say two things, uh, some of my favorite magical philosophers. Uh, I'm not going to bother naming their names right now. <laughs> they say two particularly poignant things. A. Exhibit A. Um, magic is change in accordance with will. <laughs> yeah. B. Belief is a tool. Now that's... C is where I come in and say, now that's an easy way to gas yourself up if you're not careful. Because cause you can fucking hypnotize yourself into any shit if you seriously like, throw that faith in. That's why reason... I don't know, reason may not even be the word, honestly. <sighs> Mindfulness is the better word. It's a much better word. Compassion. We bring joy to each other at best, and we bring suffering to each other at worst. Given these tools I've just brought to you today, these simple little quotations and little quips I throw at you, if there's anything you take away, if there's any power, any power you find within it, remember to behave responsibly. Because you're going to be suffering under, well, you'll probably, well, do unspeakable things. And you're going to blame me for it? Nah, nah, bro. No. I just gave you the tools, you know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't tell you what to do with it, you asshole. You know, fuck off. We never signed a contract. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Who can say where the road was in the ocean? social media give it up give it up one more time for Ed and the sermon and the staff he just walks the earth teaching and preaching the earth walks with me that's where there you go the wisdom doesn't stop give it up one more time for Ed everybody the fantastic great stuff you could call me father but you could also call me daddy father daddy father daddy I think is the preferred uh... I don't prefer anything I don't give a shit <laughs> The church of not giving a shit. Dreamwalkers United, actually. Let me plug it. All right, Dreamwalkers. He's got a business card. <laughs> Dreamwalkers United. Get the business card. The Kool-Aid is optional. <laughs> Drink the Kool-Aid, everybody. Give it up one more time for Ed, the sinister minister. All right. Is it possible we could get the great Ben Shields up to read for us? Is that... Do we have a moment? Ben? I'm coming. All right. Ben is just back from uh, the Grand Tour. He was in Italy. Great writer. Give it up. Give it up for Ben Shields. He works for, uh, what is it, Grand Journal? Grand Journal. Great literary magazine. Great writer. Give it up for Ben Shields. And tip, tip big. Tip generously. Hey, guys. So, I don't write poetry, but the first thing I ever published, like, in a real thing, 
was poetry, which is crazy because it's like the only poem I ever wrote. Woo! And so, as Matt just mentioned, I just got back from Italy. I was there for like two months. And you know, when, when you have no obligations after a certain amount of time, you start to kind of lose it. You start to <laughs> lose, lose your grip on reality. So I was thinking about this poem, which I haven't reread at all, including like even before coming up here. Woo! And the only thing I remember about it is that I wrote it when I was on a similar kind of pointless sojourn. And I don't remember where I was when I wrote it. And what I do recall, though, is that it's about kind of losing your mind while traveling. So we'll see what it says. I haven't read it in about five years. <laughs> and it's called Infanticide. The holiday ended to our great relief. The structure of leisure was unnatural and imposed. At our hotel, the stenographer was waiting and transcribed our message that we would return in a fortnight, weather permitting. We left without paying. Our driver made a comment about the snow, that it must bring to the dead grass beneath it the warmth of a cotton blanket. A black dog with a smaller companion, its offspring, sprinted past the gate ahead of us, the two of them like thick paint spatters in our periphery. Seated in back, the stenographer nursed an infant, singing a lullaby as the child held her breast in adoration. My baby lies over the ocean, my baby lies over the sea. My baby lies over the ocean, oh bring back my baby to me. The car was silent, she had nothing to transcribe. And the two of us, without communicating it, understood it was our deepest wish that the car ride would never end. Nothing to say, nothing to write, nothing to feel except relief. The holiday had ended, and we did not know where we were going. The infant's lips relaxed and released their hold on the stenographer's breast. His tiny hand clasped onto her blouse, which was raised above the exposed chest, and like a gallery attendant covering a Roman bust at closing hours, he lowered it clumsily and fell asleep. I told the driver to stop at the next rest area. He pulled up to a gas station with broken windows and pumps that had, had the nozzles disconnected. That was typical of this country. Inside, the cash register was vacant, but an old woman sat near the restrooms. She leaned her elbow lazily on a clawfoot side table on which rested a dish with oriental designs. Her expression was vacant. I thought of her waiting outside while I pissed into the stained toilet bowl and felt uneasy with my back to the door. For a few minutes, I waited, not wishing to see her again or to tip her for just watching me enter and exit. When I finally did walk past her, I dropped a coin of a currency I couldn't identify into her dish, and she nodded. There was a deli counter, also unoccupied. Still, I looked at the menu, I guess because I was hungry. I heard the buzzing of flies. My eyes grew fuzzy as they rested upon an unfamiliar object on the wooden countertop, that feeling of disorientation that comes from an optical illusion. Eventually, I perceived that the object and the sound of flies were connected. It was a severed goat's head left behind by a butcher. Couldn't have been more than a day old. Like a halo, the flies surrounded it, and I gazed in fascination for some time, until I remembered I'd kept the driver waiting. Back in the car, I told the stenographer about the inside, and she recorded it swiftly. The infant was strapped now in a car seat. Those were the good old days, just passing through the countryside with occasional stops to rest areas. It seemed exciting the small variations from stop to stop. Each day was just like the one before. None of us questioned how long it would last. Thank you. Yeah. Give it up for Ben Shields, everybody. The beauty of doing this at KGB Bar is we have incredible writers who just happen to be working here. Give it up one more time for Ben Shields. He's busting as we speak, he went from reading that incredible piece to busing immediately. That is... New York City is full of great writer bartenders. I think it's a great, uh, it's a great literary genre. All right, we've got some amazing people. We've got Honey Bee on double deck. We've got Sir Snow coming up. We've got Lillian Budagans on deck. Can we get the great Teresa G up? Great performer, great poet. Give it up for Teresa G. So meaty, everybody. Give it up, give it up. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Woo! Hi. Hi, guys. 
So a little bit about yes. me. Um, okay. I'm definitely a romantic, and I'm also the kind of person that is very like yes and no when it comes to things about love, and I'm I'm just like hot and cold, yes and no, all the time, and that's kind of what this poem is about. Sometimes I feel like two people, like Adam and Eve, the idea of another being being born from a rib, or how trees sometimes divide at the trunk, swerving in two different directions. I exist in this plane, being both or neither. I can say, nope, I'm done, had enough, start the shedding. Then I see you, cross green so you can cross over Marcy, and I'm fucked then getting fucked in the AC and showing you photos of my niece who I know you also love. Even though in the park we were fighting and it was hard to tell the difference between the sweat or my tears, but when we hugged after you crossed Marcy, I missed that feeling. Your arms are the walls, your shoulders are the windows, and our heads make the roof when it comes to the home of us. My mom asked what the, my deal is with architects, and I still don't know. <laughs> there's another person out there who maybe, when embracing, you can make a home too. It's hard, the feeling of shedding, with the feeling of gluing old skin back together, like, oh, maybe I can like this skin if I just put it back on, or take a single bite of an apple, but I don't actually chew, and I just taste it a little, and put it right back. It just doesn't work. It's not the same. It's a thing changed, growing in opposite directions. Thank you. Fantastic shit. That was great. Give it up for Teresa G, everybody. That was wonderful. Fantastic. Great. Thank you for coming out. Great stuff. You guys want to purchase or? Ithaca. Ithaca. Fantastic. Give it, give it up one more time for Teresa G and this, the Ithaca table. The three great artists. Thank you guys for coming out. Beautiful, beautiful. That was a great piece. I love that piece. Give it up one more time for Teresa G, everybody. All right. We've got Ben Callahan coming up. We've got Sebastian Gomez Martinez coming up. We've got Sir Snow on deck. We are a double deck. We've got Honey Bee on deck. Can we get the very funny Lillian Budagians up? Give it up, everybody, for Lillian Budagians. She's going to make us all laugh. Give it up, give it up. I'm going to try and make you laugh, and I'm probably going to fail. Hold on, I have too many things in my head. Woo! Okay, what if I sit down and do my jokes today? Yeah! <laughs> Woo! All right. Okay, so I just got back from a wedding. Um, has anyone been to any weddings this summer? Anyone? All right. Uh, no one. Uh, I didn't get a plus one to this wedding, which is fine with me because plus ones seem insane to me. If I was getting married, I wouldn't allow anyone to bring a plus one. No one. Unless you have like a serious partner, allowing your guests to bring a plus one is like, this is the most important day of my life and I want to be surrounded by my family, my friends, the people I love the most, and about like 15 to 18 random Kevins, Johns, and Matt. Um, yeah, that would be great. Um, uh, <laughs> these girls get it. <laughs> like, you want Kevin from Hinge at your wedding? I don't even know if I want Kevin from Hinge around my toilet. Um, uh, I am single. Uh, I used to try to date in person, um, but I always got told that I was unapproachable, uh, which I don't think it's true. Just ask the guy who mugged me last week. Um, now, uh, my friends, whenever I talk about my dating life, my friends are like, you have to treat dating like a job if you want to find a partner. <laughs> yeah, my friends are not like debutantes from Atlanta. They're like New York City ladies. So, um, does it make sense to me? I don't know what these people's idea of a job is. Like, you mean my day job? The thing I wish didn't exist and I put zero effort into? I don't think that's gonna work. Um, but I thought I was treating dating like a job, you know? 
like I'd show up for the free coffee and then spend most of my time in the bathroom, but <laughs> I, I didn't see many results that way. Um, so I'm recommitting to treating dating like a job. I applied to be an escort. Um, I don't. I don't really know if it's going to work out for me. Um, I'm the only one of my friends who has not been asked to sell pictures of their feet on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter! Twitter is not even a visual medium! And they looked at me in, at my tweets and they were like, mm, she doesn't have it. Um, uh, okay, let's see. Where are we at? Where are we at? It's really nice doing this sitting down, I have yeah. to admit. Um, I, have been, I, I don't have a job, so I can treat dating like a job. Um, I got laid off, so I, ha I was struggling with a little bit of imposter syndrome. Um, if you don't know what imposter syndrome is, that it means um, you're a 65 year old man, white man. Um, but the <laughs> definition of it is that like uh, you feel out of place, you feel like you don't belong where you are, and you don't deserve the position that you have. Um, so I'm really trying to replace like my negative thoughts surrounding that with more positive thoughts. So instead of telling myself like, oh, you're a fraud and they figured you out. I tell myself, you tricked him once and you can trick him again. Um, but okay, I got a Google Home recently, which has been helping me with the stress of like not having a job. Because like whenever I'm stressed, I can just like say the name of a song and it plays it. And like after shouting The Climb by Hannah Montana six times for it to play, I feel really good about myself. Um, all right, where are we at? Okay, so the one good thing about not having a job, I feel... I honestly feel so powerful sitting down. Okay. Yeah. Um, Woo. The one thing about not having a job is that you don't get to interact with annoying people, which is fantastic. Like the people that I hate at work are the charming people. I think they're annoying. Um, those people <laughs> that just like flirt to get what they want, I find them insufferable. Like we have this whole problem in society with people who sleep their way to the top, but it's like no one cares about people who flirt their way to the top. And like. You know what? I don't know if Amazon has influenced me too much, but I prefer the people who sleep their way to the top because they <laughs> are efficient. Um, neither of you are doing your job. Just like be the first to the finish line, you know? Um, <laughs> did someone just say geez? Okay. Um, all right. So I also found out recently that the dating app Hinge lets you filter your matches um, by ethnicity which is gross and like backwards and disgusting. I think we could use that feature on Yelp. Um, I'm what some people might call a foodie, but I really don't, I don't like that word. Like I prefer the original term for it, which is pretentious bitch. Um, and uh, by that I just mean I don't trust white people to review food. Um, so I, I really just wish we could, re we could like filter the reviews by ethnicity because I kind of just do that myself, you know? Like I look at the photos, I look at the names. But do you know how disappointing it is when I thought the review of the kebab place was by Ali, but it was actually by Ali? Um, all right, that's all I have today. Thank you so much. Give it up for Lily and Brudegians, everybody. Sorry, sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> I think uh, that's a, you invented a new genre. I think sitting down. I, th I felt like you were about to read something. The whole time. I wish I had something that good. That was hilarious. Give it up one more time for Lily and Budagians, everybody. All right, we've got Ben Callahan on double deck. We've got Sir Snow on deck. Can we get the great Honey Bee up? Give it up for Honey Bee, everybody. We got a lot of great acts to go. Get. Once again, say two drink minimum. Uh, did everybody get to write in the poem? No. All right, I'm gonna send it around again. I'm gonna send it around again. Feeling like it's not there yet. Devious dough, I love you oh so much. But how do I keep up with you? I glimpse you, precious moments under sunlight, giggling as you gurgle your guilt. How do I get close enough to clutch you for more than a mere moment? I'm unable to look into your eyes under those bashful lashes 
long enough to know are they green or are they blue or are they something much more mesmerizing. I am enchanted by you. I am baffled by you. I mutter, I do not chase, I attract. I will chase you forever. Okay, this one's called How to Get a Guy to Use You. <laughs> yeah. <Amen. laughs> be too good to be true. Study him, his every move. Make note of what you think is cute and what he thinks is cute. For example, tell him you swoon over how his shoulders swing softly how his fingers tap gently, how he dances around the patio lightly. Pay attention to him when he talks about his ex again, when he forgets about you again, when he says I'm sorry again. That is your time to shine. Remember, you don't care about pressing little wounds because you don't want perfect, you want real. And this is your real your reality. He thinks it's cute when you caress him, when you empathize with him, when you try to understand him even if you can't. Expect him to validate you, but don't expect. When you blush, it reminds me of how pink the sky was the night we first kissed. Expect your face gets so red. <laughs> followed by a tender kiss, followed by a lot of tongue, followed by a quick fucking, followed by an I love you so fucking much, followed by your slowly separating from your wildest soul, slipping into sleepless nights, squeaking at God, I don't know who I am anymore. You will lose yourself in him, and he will find himself in a girl at a bar. This is another how-to lesson learned. Give it up for Honey Bee, everybody. Fantastic, beautiful. I love hearing everything. I love everybody bringing in their information and sharing it. Thank you all for coming out. All right, we've got a lot of exciting acts to come. We've got Sky Gabriel on double deck. We've got Ben Callahan on deck. Can I get the great Sir Snow up? Give it up for Sir Snow, everybody. He's gonna do some amazing music for us. I've been here till I third, uh, enjoying the night. Thank you all for hanging out, being here. Uh, this this open mic is kind of special to me. I've, I've actually met some right. really great friends I'll and other musicians I've gotten the pleasure to work with, and I feel like there's a lot of great energy here. Um, I'm gonna do one song I usually do here called um, Heavenly, and I'm gonna try a new one um, that I haven't tried, so I'll see what that one goes. Last time, my 
favorite person is making fun of you. You making fun of me. I'm getting sensitive. I'm so insensible. You like my sedative. You bring no pressure low. You tell me how it is. Man, this uh, this this low key is is awesome. I'm gonna go high action with this uh, with this next song. I'm gonna switch it up. <laughs> nah, I'm just happy to be here, man. This Woo! is so good. Yeah. I was just I didn't know if it was me if I was tripping. I was like, I'm not that good at piano. I was like, is this is this off? Is this key off or is it just me? <laughs> You're the one I miss, only one I kiss, only one I miss. You're the one I miss, only one I kiss, you're the one for sure. You're the one I miss, only one I kiss, you're the one for sure. You're the one I miss, only one I kiss, you're the one for sure. Just absurd, like a fly on the earth. It could always get worse. That's why I hold you so tight. You never know the last night. You my type of my vice. I swear I love you on sight. Thinking all the things I might. Thinking all the things I did. Just to let you in my life. I ain't know if it was right. I ain't never think twice. Perfect image of a lie. Perfect image gonna Right. Everything's so bad. You the one I miss. Only one I kiss. You the one for sure. You the one I miss. Only one I kiss. Oh, yes, thank you. That's it. Thank you all for this. Give it up for the realist Roberto Sir Snow, everybody! <laughs> All right, this, uh, we've got Daniel Tavares on double deck. We've got Sky Gabrielle on deck. This next performer is a great comedian. We're so psyched to have him back. And he's a fellow Rifkin's Festival enthusiast. I mean, check out Rifkin's Festival if you haven't watched it yet. I saw Wallace Shawn on the street the other day, and so I'm a Rifkin head. This guy's a Rifkin head. Can we get can we get some kids give a warm welcome? Make it loud for the great Ben Callahan, everybody. Very funny guy. Yeah. Yeah. Rifkin's festival, everybody. Right. Give it up for your host, your, your teacher, your prophet, Matt Rock, everybody. Come on. So, I'm halfway through dinner with Andre. Yeah. I had to take like four four breaks. It's it's um, I just, you know, it's just a dinner with two, they're, it's crazy, I'm, I, you know, it's great, it's a good movie, but I, it's like, geez, this is actually a dinner with Andre, that's, anyway, how are we doing, folks, let's not get caught up on Wally Sean's career, resume, uh, you guys, are we sick of social media, or what, it's bad for us, we're artists, we're trying to be off social media, Dude, even the language of social media is crazy to me. You know what I mean? Like the homepage is called your feed. You ever notice that? <laughs> Isn't that just gross? Yeah. You know what I mean? Every day they're walking us to the trough of content. <laughs> it's feeding time, boy. Come on. Come get your feed. It's a, I, I don't know. <laughs> feed. I did that just call it, I don't know, your vegetables. Call it something, you know, I don't know. It's weird. You ever have those apps that uh, prevent you? Like, you know, it blocks Instagram, it tries to help you, you know, block Instagram. You know those apps? You know that, anyone? Um, I have like 10 of those to try and block me. 
And every, it always happens, this happens every time. As soon as it tries, it's like, hey, maybe it's not a good idea. I'm like, get out of here. I delete all of them. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't I want to go on, I want to scroll on Instagram. Just get out of here. It's like hiring private security and then being like, wait, who are you? <laughs> you know, just what, what am I doing? You know? It's not like that, is it? It's not like that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so original social media take up here. Social media bad. <laughs> Great, right? You can tell I've been, you know, I'm really intelligent. <laughs> That's good. Um, anyway, I was watching the news. I'm, I'm also done with the news. I'm done with it. There's nothing good. There's nothing good on the news. I flip around. There's nothing good. Um, I, I saw the Titanic. They were talking about the, that Titanic sub that went down. Yeah. And uh, there was a scientist on, you know, CNN or whatever. He was talking about how much pressure is down there in the ocean. And he was trying to make it easier for us to understand. He's like, you know, Anderson, it's as much pressure as two elephants standing on top of each other on one tiptoe. That's how much. I was like, is that supposed to help us understand? Really? That's the analogy you're going with? The, the circus analogy? Is that, is that what's going to get the public to understand science? You know what I mean? How do they even come up with this stuff? Are they in the lab like, I don't know, man, it's not enough pressure. Maybe get them up on one tiptoe. Maybe that'll do it. Maybe uh, we'll get the reading we need. He's like, am I good? You're like, you're exactly halfway. We need to put another one on top of you. Uh, sure. okay. <laughs> Whatever you gotta do. Um, Titanic fans, anyone? Titanic. Woo! Titanic. I love how everyone's now an expert in carbon fiber. You know what I mean? <laughs> they saw the same 10 minute segment of James Cameron. We all saw it. We all tried to act like experts. You know what I mean? I was like, uh, no, okay. Um, no, it's crazy. It's crazy they would go down in that um, thing. Uh, I'm a Planet Fitness member, I know you can tell. <laughs> Someone like me who says they go to the gym, it's like, yeah, yeah, Planet Fitness, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, anyone here go to the planet? Anyone? Woo! Uh, yeah, anyone going into Planet Fitness's orbit? I don't know what these riffs are. Just really zero out of ten riffs tonight. <laughs> Too much Ripkins Festival. All right. Woo! No, anyway. Guys, seriously, why haven't you seen Rifkin's Festival? What the hell, man? Get on to that. Anyway, no, Planet Fitness, this is, it's $10 a month. The, it's, the whole point is to get people to sign up who will never go, but they're okay because it's only $10 a month. You know what I mean? You look at your bank statements, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I didn't go to the gym this month, but it's only $10. I, I signed up. It's fine. <laughs> you know, I feel like it's just, because they know no one's going to go, so... I, I thought of that on the way here, so I just wanted to do this. I thought of that in Planet Fitness with my three pound weight. That would really be good. I like that. Dude, this is a true story. I was in the gym. I've been going to this gym, Canal Street, Planet Fitness. You know, I don't want to brag. You know, Canal Street. I've been going for three years. First of all, come on. I am suing gyms. I have no results. <laughs> False market. I mean, I do listen to like Bob Dylan and Richard Wagner at the gym. Maybe that has something to do with it, but I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. I'm like on the bike. <laughs> Right the Valkyries. Um, anyway, for the stupid people out there, Richard Wagner. I don't know if you... Uh, yeah. yeah, there we go. Um, anyway, so I was at the gym. I was lifting like, you know, 0 0.0 pounds or whatever. And um, there was a guy next to me, jacked, huge. And uh, he was like, hey man, it's just about consistency. Keep coming. I was like, dude, I've been coming here for... Th what? I've been coming here for three years. I've never even seen you. What do you mean? I'm a, I'm a loyalty member. Do I, do I look that bad? I don't know. It's just kind of like... Don't give a compliment. A compliment can be an insult when it's said in a bad sequence. <laughs> that was a compliment technically, but it was so, I cried. <laughs> I cried on the elliptical after that. Yeah, I do cardio after. All right, I don't know. <laughs> what else? Uh, anyway, I was at a fancy restaurant. Anyone here goes to that thing? <laughs> Trying to relate anyhow. Anyway, I was at a fancy restaurant. I was getting dinner with Andre, actually. That's what I was. Man, yeah, that movie's great, but admit yeah. it's a little boring. A little boring. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, so my whole special is going to be about dinner with Andre. <laughs> Shooting out in May. But... No, but anyway, I was at this expensive restaurant, and I saw a menu item. Um, was barnacles was on the menu. And it was super expensive. It was like $120. And I asked the waiter, I'm like, why are these so expensive barnacles? He's like, actually, sir, it's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world is to harvest barnacles. Many people die a year. And I don't know why, but I was like, uh, it's okay, I'll get those. Don't, you don't need to continue. I just, I don't know. I was like, can you get me a batch that someone died for? Is that, did I just, 
I don't know, it's just the flavors might be bad. I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, you know how the grape has to work harder and it's better for wine? Maybe somehow that would try, all right, I'm sorry. I was like, did you have kids? Can you give me the story? But, <laughs> he was super desperate, right? <laughs> all right? Anyway, no, I was with my girlfriend at the time and I was like, you know, you say I don't take you out. Someone died for that. Come on, eat, let's get out of here. Someone died over those barnacles. Come on, how you doing? <laughs> okay, all right. This is my clean act, by the way. Have you noticed? I'm clean, I'm clean now. It's like math. Just not doing dirty jokes. I'm, I'm clean. I'm, all right. Um, anyway, you ever you ever about to hook up with somebody, then you do the quick half-ass, like, hey, do you have any disease? <laughs> I love how we do that. As a, hey, do you have any disease that would ruin my life? No. Okay, let's just continue. It's not a big deal. I love how I, I asked that one time, and in my head, I'm like, I, this is this is like, I'm still get, okay. She has herpes. I'll still do it. I'll be a little bit more nervous, but I'm still gonna do it. You know what I mean? I'll be slightly less hard and a little bit more nervous, but otherwise, I'm doing it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, it'll ruin my night later after I combust, but after that, no, it's crazy. It's like me, a heroin addict. I'm not saying I'm a heroin addict, but it's like if I was a heroin addict, <laughs> that's why I can't gain. I'm just like, I, it's the like my, my friends are trying to tell me, dude, it's a heroin, bro. It's not protein. You don't stop drinking whey. You're doing heroin, bro. Anyway, so no, it's like me go, a heroin, like going to my heroin dealer. Hey, is there fentanyl in this? Do you know, is there anything that's gonna kill me, prod me, poke me? I like how the cops say that to like cr hardened criminals. Anything that's gonna prod me, poke me, stab me. You, you hear that quick thing? All right, I think I might crack. Um, <laughs> What was in that uh, uh, ginger beer, Ben? Feels. <laughs> <Cheers, brother>. All right. <laughs> Say 50 minutes. All right. I go to a therapist, Woo! and he's, he's a. You think I'm a hack? This guy's a real hack. <laughs> this guy is horrible. He bombs every session. Let me tell you. I, I don't have insurance, so I have this guy. I don't even know if he's a doctor or what, what he is. He might. This just might be a side hustle. You know what I mean? But anyway, you ever have a therapist that reminds you to pay him after throughout the session? <laughs> Do you have this? It's so rude, first of all. I'm like, dude, I'm in the middle of like a very personal story. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna pay you, bro. I mean, maybe, if you, we'll see what's in my account. But no, it's like, what is this guy living patient to patient? What is this? I mean, come on, like one guy kills himself. He's like, oh shit, there goes a rent. Oh my God, I should have listened to that douche. It's oh, brutal. No, this guy, he takes Venmo, which is a, a red flag. Anyone taking Venmo is a red If it's a drug dealer, it's a good sign. <laughs> oh, okay, you're up to, te you know, day on the technology, that's good. But if you're a f doctor, I mean, come on. Anyway, so I pay him on Venmo. All right, uh, that, after I say that, I do pay him on Venmo. I don't know if you know this about Venmo. You can't just pay somebody. You have to write a memo. It makes you write something. I didn't know what to put. I just put a couple crying emojis. That's all I could think of. I didn't know, you know, I didn't want to get descriptive on what I was talking about that session. That's like super. Imagine seeing my feed. It's like Uncle Johnny, 1998. I don't know. It's just, it's bad. All right. What are we doing? What are we doing? Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Let's give it up for the mic while I look at this. Distract me. Um, that wasn't. You didn't really give it up. That was like giving up to here. You barely got above sea level. Just, you know, do what you want. All right, um, what else? I, uh, another reason I don't read the news is the stories are dumb. You know, I read this story, it was about NYU, which I didn't even go, I don't know why I'm reading about it, but anyway, there, there was a janitor who worked there for like 40 years and he said and there was a building at NYU that was haunted. And um, he was like, it was like, there were certain parts of the building he just wouldn't go to because he felt the presence. I was like, that's just him not doing his job. How, what, what the, how did NYU fall for that? Columbia would never have fallen for that, let me tell you. Columbia, I know those guys up at Columbia, they would have never... No, but it's like, can you imagine, I, I wish I could do that in my old job, I would have CC'd you, but it, there was just a presence, I don't know, there was... I was getting something, I don't know, there was something died in the CC, and it rose... Okay, thanks. Is that, is that one minute, or done? One minute. Okay, alright, I just want to shoot. Um, I burned through all the clean material. Um, that's all I have. A year of doing this, that's all the that clean stuff I have. But I'm really trying to. Let's, let's, be, let's be nice. So, anyway, I, uh, let, me, let me get this notes. <clears throat> you ever tried dirty talk? Okay, I'm dirt going dirty. It's fine. I, I, I am so bad at it. <clears throat> and I get pressured into it, I will say. Like, you know, I feel under the...
I feel the heat, and uh, yeah, I just like some stupid stuff will come. I'll be like uh, guzzle on my Johnson, uh, you know, just like old timey terms. It doesn't even make any sense. Then I'm like, back to you, Sarah. Yeah, okay. Give it. I want her to do it. I don't want to be put on the spot, you know. All right. I like dirty silence. <laughs> just, just. <sighs> that's it. That's as much noise as I want in sex. It's just heavy breathing, and. Um, you know, and then I'll be like, how much was it before the thing? All right, <laughs> All right let's, let's end on a high note for the fans. Um, <laughs> can I do one dirty one? I'll do it. Porno theaters. Love them or hate them. Porno theaters. Can you imagine how awkward it would be to have to yell at someone who's on their phone in the porno theater? How terrible. You know that happens sometimes, you know, someone's on their phone. What did it look like? Hey, man, come on, put it away. That's disgusting. Put that thing away. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah! Thanks, Woo! Thanks again. Hell Thanks, yes. Yeah. Give it up for the great, great Ben Callahan, everybody. Yeah. Have you seriously only been doing comedy for a year? Yes, sir. That's great. Give it up for Ben Callahan. Woo! Fantastic. The dirty silence. That's what it's all about. Hell yeah. Give it up one more time for Ben Callahan, everybody. Great comedian. Very, very funny. All right. We've got a lot of great acts coming up. We've got Sir Hobby Dar coming up. We've got Jason King coming up. We've got Surya Deer coming up. We've got Daniel Tavares on double deck. We've got Sebastian Gomez Martinez on deck. Can we get the great Sky Gabrielle up to play? Uh, Sky Gabrielle, are you... All right, give it up for Sky Gabrielle, everybody. A great, great uh, musician. We're super excited to see Sky Gabrielle. Give me the mic. It's the piano's mic. Love, love when Scotty Gabriel plays piano. 
Amazing. All right, we've got Jason King on double deck. We've got Sir Herbie Dar coming over. Sir Deirdre coming over. We've got Daniel Tavares on deck. Can we get Sebastian Gomez Martinez up? <laughs> Been waiting patiently all night. Thank you for sticking around. Once again, it is a two drink minimum. And we're partying. There's no work tomorrow. We got Miriam coming up. We got amazing shit. It's a heartbreaking song. It would translate something like you. Um, hmm. How would you translate that? Like you made me used to the beautiful things, but you don't make me used to uh, how live. How would that live without you? Okay. And the other one, it's uh, a composition. It's my own composition. It's about two people that are in a garden and they want to stay in the garden like forever. Thank you very much. Woo! I'm playing this song live, so I'll be like it. Mm-hmm. 
lado, tu costado, preguntando, interesando, que no quiero ver las horas pasar, dame tiempo acá. Sebastian Gomez Martinez, everybody. Kind of phenomenal. Thank you for coming out. Thank you very do you, much. Do you have a Spotify or anything? Coming soon. All right, we will check it out. We'll check out his social media. That was so beautiful. And this full moon. Is everybody feeling good out there? Full moon? Yeah. July 3rd. Woo! We don't have to work tomorrow. We're going all night. We got amazing stuff. We have Sir Hobby Dar on double deck. We have Surya Deer coming up. Uh, we've got BS coming up. We've got Jason King on deck. Can I get Daniel Tavares up? Let's give give a big round of applause for Daniel Tavares. Stand up comedy, everybody. How's it going, y'all? Can we get a big round of applause for all of those people who just came up tonight? Woo! Thank you so much. This is the first time I have ever done stand up comedy today. Woo! I came in here. And I am very fucking scared right now <laughs> off my ass, but I can't see any of you because the lights are so bright So let's fucking get it. Woo! Um, yeah. Also, I uh, want to thank the bartender for giving me this menu so I can write down notes <laughs> Really it was just fantastic job um, and uh, Essentially um, my name's Danny um, I shouldn't have given my last name because we're fucking recording and if this doesn't go good, I'm going to need to see that fucking camera, I promise you that. <laughs> you want to talk about a military industrial complex, I'll do you worse than we did fucking Libya in 94. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding about that. 
<laughs> oh yeah, you guys don't know what happened in Libya in 94. Of course, you're fucking socialists. Everything's uh, fucking uh, theoretical, not concrete. Yeah, right. Anyway, anyway, what I do want to talk about is, um, since this is in the spirit, right? We're in the spirit of independence. It's Independence Day, there's a full moon out. So, might as well just go ahead and just go right forward, right? I, I didn't think I was gonna do this tonight. I walked by the bar, I frequent KGB very often, Woo! but uh, once I saw an open mic night, I was here with my friend, and uh, instead of getting very fucking wasted, which is what I would probably usually do on a night like this, um, I decided, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna go for it, just Woo! for the thrill. So, um, I, uh, I, 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 I do this because in, in, in the spirit of making you guys happy, I'm a filmmaker, I'm an actor, I'm a theater artist, and um, I'm also a writer in many aspects. I've never done something like this before. It scares the shit out of me, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, and honestly, I do this to make you guys laugh, to make you guys passionate, and if in any moment I am a bit too vulgar, a bit too crazy, a bit too zany, I promise it is not in the spirit to offend you guys, and I hope you find some sort of profundity in the profanity, some vitality in the vulgar, but um, I'm just gonna let loose and go do what I gotta do. If you guys at any point feel offended, please don't rush the stage, please don't try to hit me, please don't try to do anything crazy, just start counting one, two, three, four, and I will just, at, at, just give me a five second head start, I'll just run for the exit, that's it, that's all I need. But, anyway, my topic, what I wanted to speak about today is the topic of love, and in particular, long lost lovers, right. Um, the longest relationship I ever had, uh, it, was, uh, it was about three years, three years long, and it was in high school, and it was with uh, this beautiful, beautiful um, Israeli girl, and um, her name I will say just in case this motherfucker is recording, but <laughs> when, uh, when I get really anxious, and uh, like now, um, and I get really nervous, I, I close my eyes, and I, I think about the warm embrace of, of, of being with her. You know, um, that, that, that warm embrace of thinking about, you know, what, what it was like at, at one point to just hold her in my arms and just feel the love, the comfort, and those big fucking titties. Holy shit, those titties. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, sorry, not to be bold, but um, love in many essences is the elixir of life. That's what we talk about when we talk about love. Something that, that fills us with a certain level of satisfaction and, and a certain level of passion and vitality. And that's something that I, I feel like I want to do with the, with the comedy that I'm expressing to you guys here today. Um, anything more is going to cost you $80 plus a massage. But regardless, um, what I do want to talk about is um, there's a very interesting quote about love. And I might butcher it, but I'm going to count it out in pentameter just in case, you know, whatever. Um, it is of love perpetual that I do seek upon your rosy face I place a kiss. Does anybody know Shakespeare? If you raise your yeah. hand, you know Shakespeare? Yeah, that wasn't fucking him. You're a fucking phony. You're a phony. That wasn't even him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so, yeah. No, what the fuck was that? Oh, yeah, I know Shakespeare. And no shit. Um, and, I'm joking. But um, in, any, in, in any event, um, I was, I, I broke up with this girl when I was in high school. It was very stupid. The, the way that this happened, it was, it was very dumb. I cared about her a lot, but I, I was like 16 at the time, so I, I did something very stupid, right? So we, we ended up breaking up. So I, I work now at an immersive art gallery, right? And I'm a host there, I, I speak there. And um, uh, while I was at this immersive art gallery, right, I, I got off work one day, and I get a call. And, um, it's, it's her. A girl I've never seen in about like three or four years. I graduated college and stuff, we, we hadn't even seen each other. And then I got, I got a call from her and it was magical. You know, the first thing I thought was, oh my God, guess who's getting laid tonight? Oh shit, guess who's back, motherfucker? I was like, yeah, she missed the stroke. I'm talking do the hokey pokey and I turn that ass around. But Anyway, she called me back. <laughs> she, 
she called me back and and obviously, you know, I, I answered the phone and I was like, alright. What's good, baby? <laughs> and she was like, hey, is this Danny? You know who this is. What's going on? My dad just got diagnosed with stage three cancer and he doesn't have a lot of time left. And I remember that he enjoyed spending a lot of time with you. So I would like to see if you would want to see him before he passed. And in that moment, I was like, fucking boner killer. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's crazy. Like, I haven't spoken to you in years. But anyway, um, I, 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 was, I was obviously in shock because I had a great relationship with her father. Really great relationship. I mean, this is a three-year-long relationship. So, and, and he was also Israeli. He was an artist, and he was an amazing artist, incredible, someone inspiring, someone crazy inspiring, just to speak to, just to just to see. He was he was fantastic. So, hearing that he was going to not be able to make it in a few days, it, it really touched me, in in, in a way that I, I had never been touched before. So I. I said, yes, I, I'd love to see your dad. And, and, and not only was he a great artist, he also allowed us, and, and this is something, I'm a, Domin I'm a Dominican man, I've never, been, I've never seen this before. He allowed us just to, to fornicate in his crib without even interrupting. Like, I was like, he, just, he didn't even come in, he didn't try to stop nothing. I was like, oh shit, we're fucking her room, in her house, her dad don't even give a shit. But anyway, and we also had dinner afterwards too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but afterwards, after she gave me this call, I, 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 I went through a moment where I was like, wow, like I, I was on the train home and I was just thinking about all the time that passed, what, what, what the possibilities could be. And then sooner than later, I, uh, I, I went and I, I got a call from her the next day, actually, and she told me that her father had passed away. Next day father had passed away. And I don't know if you guys are anyone here, I mean, she was Israeli, she was a Jewish girl. I don't know if any of you guys here are, are vermin, but, <laughs> but I, I was given the privilege, I'm so sorry, I was given the privilege to go to Sit Shiva, which was the, I've never done that before, Sit Shiva. It was, it was, and it's, it's an Israeli funeral or a Jewish funeral. Yeah. So we, we all sat down and, and I, I was like, all right, well, what should I get? I got kosher wine, I went over there, and um, I, I got to see her again. And she's there at the steps, she's there with her friends. Day her father passed away, a couple days after her father passed away. She's there at the steps and I see her again for the first time in years. And I see all of her friends who are there, who are there to support her, who are there to love her. And what they say is, they see me, and I was like, wow, all these bitches used to hate me. Like, all of these girls dislike me so bad. They're here to support her, obviously, but they absolutely despise me. So I walked in that bitch like, sugar night, like, fur coat, everything, like, yeah, guess who's back, motherfucker? Yeah, I, I'm in this bitch, what? What and what? So I, I walk in there, um, and the first person I see is her mother. And she's a, she's a British woman. She comes up, she, I'm, I'm gonna end this real soon, but she comes up and she says, she comes up in a British accent and she just goes, Oh, Danny, Danny. She gives me a hug. Danny, Danny, Danny. Oh, Danny. Oh, Danny, it's so good to see you. Oh, Danny, and I hadn't gotten laid in so long and I just... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you guys for allowing me to yeah. say my speech. Thank you. <laughs> Give it up for Daniel Tavares, everybody. First time ever doing comedy. That was pretty fucking good, I gotta say. We don't need to chase you out of the room or anything. That was fantastic. Give it up one more time for Daniel Tavares. You work at an immersive art museum? Yes. What, what museum? Uh, I don't want to say All right. Well, what, see Daniel Tavares. It might be the museum of sex. It might be the museum of ice cream. We don't know. <laughs> Give it up for Daniel Tavares, everybody. All right, we got Sir Yadir coming up. He's on double deck. We got Bios coming up. We got amazing acts. We got really great stuff. Bryce like, okay, I do, okay, for this next act, I do want to say, I don't know if I should admit this in public, but uh, I did see the Ray J sex tape. Okay? 
it popped up in my algorithm. I clicked, I clicked, I clicked because JC King is a bit of, you know, I, I watched the, I watched the YouTube and I'm seeing, he's absolutely right, he's absolutely right, Ray J says, go hard for me little homie, give it up for Jason King everybody! Fucking one. I, uh, well, listen, I, do you, I don't know if you guys do you do you, do you know about that in the beginning of the Kim Kardashian sex tape? Ray J kneels into the camera and he goes, you know, he's like, hey, if you're watching this, go hard for me. Give it, in. that happens. This fucking two thousands artist was like, you know what, this porno needs an intro. I mean, fuck yeah. Hey man, what's your name, Daniel? Yes. Dan Daniel, hey, give it up for him one more time. This is hard, dude. Woo! That is hard. It's fucking hard. And you definitely can't tell people what museum he works at because you said bitches like 13 times. <laughs> yeah. they, they wouldn't like that. Not, especially if it's an art museum. You can't. You can't. <laughs> and like, where is the modern art? It's like, well, you bitches can find it over here. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that, man. Fuck yeah! I uh, this is, okay. I, they uh, they uh, overturned affirmative action recently. Yeah, I I feel like we just lost a major reason for having kids with black people. <laughs> you know, like I don't I like I don't know why you if you're white like I don't know why you do it otherwise. You know, like your kids are in constant danger. You know, you're constantly like caring for like you know their racial insecurities and then. After a whole life of dealing with all that shit, you know, you don't have like a like a like a like a white kid with 400 years of Harvard legacy supporting your retirement. Your retirement has to be supported by a nigga that went to Baruch. <laughs> and I know that sounds bad. My brother's a nigga that went to Baruch. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I know, I know it's hard. It's like a tough thing to talk about, especially for like Asian Americans. You know what I mean? But it's like uh, I don't know. I, I sometimes think about like what, like what do I say to my kids like after they're going through all like the, you know, racial stress? And I feel like the only thing I could have said is like, hey, you might get into Harvard easier, but not anymore. You know? And it's not there. Are not many things that you could like tell your kid is good about being black. You know? Especially if you know they're a girl. Like I can't. I can't turn to my daughter and be like, one day you'll have a really nice dick. <laughs> it's not gonna, It's not gonna happen. Well, one, listen, one day you do have a really nice dick. It's what, <laughs> it's what it comes to be. I don't know, but here's the other thing. Uh, I don't even know, only 30% of Democrats support affirmative action. Did you know that? But the, the issue with this court case is all the implications that this has for everything else, right? This now means that this could move into the workplace, right? A workplace doesn't need diversity. It doesn't need diversity for race. It doesn't need diversity for gender. It doesn't need diversity for orientation. Like, a workplace is just gonna go back to being a bunch of white men who like don't know, don't even know like how to talk about race. Like we, we didn't have, we had a diversity problem at my last job, right? And on Juneteenth, we had a bunch of white people in the company. They were like, there are not enough black people here. We need to acquire more. Oh it's gonna be a lot more people like that. A lot of black people tell them that's not how you do it. I, um, let's see, switching topics. I went to a store recently, uh, and when I got to the store, I was like looking for this item, so I went up to a cashier and I was like, "Hey, man, can you help me find you know this thing?" And he's like, "Yes." He's like, "Listen, we decided not to carry that anymore, right?" I'm like, who the fuck is we? Right? Like, who, like, I like how like companies will trick their employees into thinking that their job is part of their identity. <laughs> right? I mean, like, if you were like dating a girl and you cheated on her, and you're like, hey, babe, I cheated, but you need to let it go because we <laughs> forgive. <laughs> That's what we do. Okay, cool. I, uh, I'll talk about it. I uh, usually when I do shows, I walk up to music. I recently did a show. I walked up to Carl Douglas's Kung Fu Fighting. <laughs> you guys know the song? I love this song because like you never hear people write songs about other obscure skills. Right? Never hear like bomb, 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 bomb. Niggas play.
playing frisbee. <laughs> okay. I gotta talk about DJs. I um, I hate I hate the fact that like DJs will do everything but play the song. <laughs> you know. Like, we don't need to see all of your skills, just play the song that we came to dance to. <laughs> you know, that'd be like if you went to a hibachi restaurant, and then instead of feeding you, the chef just kept catching shrimp and, <laughs> and making little onion volcanoes. <laughs>